<clears throat> hey hi everyone uh, i hope everyone is doing well so uh, i am going to start uh, today with uh, some discussions on uh, programming coding uh, and the reason i think uh, uh, it is important is that in uh, a few tech companies uh, for example google uh, facebook uh, Amazon uh, and I think also some of the other uh, let's say recent uh, you know startups there is definitely a component in the interview that actually uh, tests the candidate on uh, their understanding of uh, you know coding in general so uh, you don't have to be a master uh, you know to code uh, but I think uh, concepts related to data structure uh, for example, algorithms, I think those are frequently like, you know, uh, asked. So there's no harm in learning about this. I will try to cover, I think, most of the, let's say, uh, uh, concepts that test uh, interview uh, questions, I think, uh, through probably five or six, uh, you know, different videos. So today we are going to start with uh, LIS, uh, which is a type of data structure. We are going to use the programming language of uh, Python, uh, Jupyter Notebooks uh, is where, you know, you can test out all uh, the capabilities. Uh, I have used uh, this extensively in the past when I had a software engineering background where I was working as a software engineer. Also, when I actually uh, worked as a, a machine learning uh, data scientist. So, uh, Python, very, like I would say, scalable. Uh, you know, language very easy to understand, comprehend, and I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, easily like, you know, uh, grab. So without further, like, you know, delay, I think let's just start with, I think, uh, LIS and its operation type. So uh, I think LIS are very straightforward to understand. Uh, they are like compound data type uh, that are used to kind of, you know, group values. Uh, you can use uh, uh, LIS, uh, you know, items in the list using square brackets. Um, and might contain uh, lists might contain different types of objects, uh, uh, right? But primarily, I think the same object type is what uh, you know what I've seen uh, being used probably for 95, 96 percent of the cases, right? So here is an example of list wherein you are defining a list uh, and assigning uh, elements uh, to the list using square brackets, right? As I mentioned. Uh, if you test it out, you print this uh, basically uh, cubes of numbers uh, by each individual uh, element index, then I think you'll get the answer, right? Now, there are uh, quite a few operation types. Uh, I think and the best way to learn about these is to basically go to the official documentation of Python, uh, you know, uh, on the web. So there is a Python, I think, releases that happen very frequently, uh, you know, different versions, and there is an extensive documentation of what are the operations. I have kind of structured that using uh, uh, the documentation that Python provides, plus also, uh, like, you know, looked into uh, the interview questions and probably picked, handpicked, I think, the ones that are most, let's say, useful. This is by no means an extensive list of like, you know, the operations that Python supports. Uh, there's going to be another video wherein I'll cover advanced list operations and followed by, let's say, some five or ten interview questions. So I think you'll get a good understanding of uh, uh, how do you like, you know, uh, how do you actually solve for these, right? So concatenation, my name suggests straightforward. Um, there is a list that I already had, right? So cube of numbers. I want to add one more element. Uh, I just add it through this plus symbol. And uh, then I just uh, print this list and I get this, uh, you know, newly added element as part of the original uh, list, right? So uh, that is on the concatenation. Also, uh, to mention that lists are mutable, which means, um, you know, so if you had your original list, right, uh, and you had these elements in your list, which is uh, 18276525, right? So, uh, Mutable means you can change the elements uh, of the list. Uh, 65, obviously, if you see, like, is not a cube of any of the numbers. So it's a mistake. Let's say it's a mistake and entry, right? So you want to change it. You just do the index number, which is third. So zero, it's all the lists actually start with zero. So zero, one, two, three, and you change it to 64. And then you see the output, right? Uh, you get the corrected output, uh, right? So that means, uh, you know, you can change the elements of the list, which implies that lists are mutable. 
Now lists can also be appended, which means that if I have a list with a fixed set of items, I can uh, add to that. So I basically, let's say, had this list in which I want to append uh, seven, uh, the queue or the number seven, right? Uh, what would be the outcome? I think leave that in the comments. Uh, but if you are on a Jupyter notebook, you just do a, a cubes of numbers. Use this command called dot append to your original list, and then type out the seven, uh, you know, cubes seven cross cross three, right? And then basically use the uh, uh, print command to see what has happened, right? Uh, you in some cases you'll also need to understand uh, the length of the list. I think let's say when you are running loops and things of that nature, right? How uh, how how many times the loop should be read? We'll cover all of that, uh, you know, in more advanced operation. But useful to know that you can find out the length, which is basically the number of elements. All right. So here, for example, for count of numbers, you had uh, six elements, right? After we did an append, we had six elements. So this is what is basically showing you, right? Uh, a deletion of items is also required from time to time. Um, so here, for example, you had six items and you want to delete out the last item. So you can uh, do that. You can also specify any other item and then, you know, use uh, that in a similar manner. Syntax is pretty straightforward. Delete and then the name of the list and the item index, right? Uh, and now then finally coming to our like, you know, last part of this introductory list and operations topic is the nested list, right? So the nested lists are essentially nothing but lists inside lists, right? So here, for example, I have a cube of numbers list and I have a squares of numbers, right? So these are like, you can see uh, one to five, you have both the cubes as well as the square. Now I'm creating a list, which is the combination of both, right? So basically I'm creating squares and cubes and I'm saying that this will be a nested list, right? So here, for example, when I do a print square, right, uh, squares and cubes, I see both the lists uh, are being uh, printed simultaneously, right? Now, the interesting part about this is that I can individually access the elements uh, of each of these lists, uh, right? So pay a little more attention here. So when I'm saying like four squares and cubes, I want to access uh, the first element, uh, which is so this is a two dimension list, right? So zero and one would be representing this. So zero, for example, here would be representing this entire uh, list, uh, uh, right? And inside that I'm saying, I'm looking at the second element, which means zero, one and two. I'm looking at this number, right? So this is what it prints. Now, if you say that I'm looking at squares and cubes first and then third, right? Which means I'm looking at the uh, uh, second list, which is, first which is indicated by this one here and then the third element right so which is 0 1 2 and third right so i'm looking at 64 right uh, try typing uh, uh, or looking for squares and cubes 2 comma 0 and tell me what happens right leave leave the like i think answer in the comments uh, but i think this should give you a fair understanding of nestedness uh, you can access each of the individual elements of those nested list uh, by uh, traversing in this manner, which I have kind of highlighted here. And also, uh, there's no limit, I think, to the numbers, um, uh, you know, that you can have. Uh, you can have as many nested lists as you want. Obviously, traversing each time and the length of the list will make it very performance heavy operation. So if you have 10 lists, for example, with, I don't know, let's say um, millions of uh, like, you know, uh, records, millions of numbers, right? then it's going to be definitely uh, uh, taking more time, right? But as said, there's no, like, you know, uh, I would say limit. Unless it is, let's say, uh, Python is being used to access a database, and then that database, there is a limit, uh, you know, to store, let's say, uh, you know, list type. So other than that, I, at least in my uh, understanding, there's no uh, limit. So I hope, I think this was useful. Next up, I think we'll cover some advanced topics in list. Um, I think on data structure, the further topics that I'll be covering would be strings, stacks, and queues, trees, heaps, and graphs, recursion, sorts, advanced algorithms, and uh, let me put it, uh, you know, as a final, uh, you know, uh, topic, which is the sample interview questions. Um, 
will try to cover i think mostly ha- medium easy and some bit of hard questions so that you you can like you know just uh, uh, understand the nature of the question that will appear uh, in the interview so i hope i think this was useful uh, uh so until the next video please do like and subscribe uh, to my content and uh, uh, keep preparing